Hey, what's up, guys? I'm backstage with Chad Zaliga from Black Label Society and previously Breaking Benjamin. Uh, the dude just played a monster show, and uh, I actually was blessed to get the chance to ask him a few questions here. So I'm just going to ask him a few things and uh, try and maybe come up with some stuff that you guys might be interested in. So when you play a song live, mm -hmm. how much of it is improv? How much of it is like kind of note for note what you play on the track? Well, I mean, I try to give credit where credit's due, you know. Uh, when I first get the gig, I try to play it verbatim because that's what you're familiar with. Yeah. If the person recorded it and I have to do that. Uh, or they might just say, play it exactly like this. Or they might say, play this, but change this up. Do what you want to do, you know, for fun. I think um, as a hired gun or even a person that's got to cover these parts as a drummer, my opinion, is learn the way the drummer play. Um, because nine times out of ten, they've already been familiar with the structure of the song that, that are fans of the band. Yeah. They've heard it that way. So don't change it just yet. Get the respect, and then once they trust you enough and you've taken them for a ride for a year or so, kind of change it up. You know, I think. Uh, the real cool thing about drumming um, is just spontaneous, you know, just the, the, the magical part of music is there's no boundaries. Do whatever you want, you just kind of kind of keep it in the realm of the song. But it's your job is, I mean, uh, to paint a canvas. Everyone paints a canvas differently, even though it's the same canvas. We're all saying, you know, good drummers, just everyone takes more maybe detail over in this part and this part where you know I'm like their seventh or eighth drummer in the band and you know my goal is to do more or comparable to what each drummer has and I try to give 115 percent so I try to keep it true to the structure and once I get a little comfortable with it and I get the respect and, and the honesty from my fans then I kind of change it up a little bit. Cool I, I think that's excellent advice like really respecting the, the original work because people, that's what they know. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing that I really, really noticed in really comparison to the other bands that were playing is your style has an incredible amount of groove to it. Oh, thank and, you. Um, I mean, it's not only does it, of course, you could you could just play like with the, with the, the normal kind of general kind mm -hmm. of hard rock metal style, but that groove is something that really took it over the top when I was listening to it. I mean, I listened to it and just the way you would you would put in that uh, like the hi hat and the snare and the kick every once in a while and in into the the frame of the song that just really um, it felt more uh, it felt more right than possibly it was like just written down originally. Like it just there was so much groove to it. How what kind of background like brought that out from you? Well, thank you for the compliments, Casey. But um, I don't. I mean. I've always said it as I teach drum lessons at home and, and on Skype that to me if you don't know your meat and potatoes which is your kick and snare um, gravy's not going to make it any better so if you can't groove putting a bunch of fills or a bunch of white noise or what have, what have you isn't going to make your meat and potatoes taste better so what the advice I could say to a drummer is is really concentrate on the kick and snare and find a foundation what we call a pocket yeah. you know my fiance is like you had a nice pocket so it's cute <laughs> but um, she's very knowledgeable about the pocket now and I've educated her on it and now she understands what it means to feel good you know keeping it simple um, you know I'm not a simple drummer per se but I try to play what's right at that time and, and again the respect and, and the honesty with the fans it's like you want to take them for a ride you just don't want to, you know, go crazy grand finale right off the bat. You don't want to play hard right off the gate. Some people do, and that works for them, not me. I want to take them for a roller coaster ride because I believe if you just give your grand finale right off, it's like watching the fireworks. It's like <laughs> at the end, you don't have any yeah. more to give. So you really got to push yourself if you're doing the grand finale at the beginning to do another grand finale at the end. And I think, you know, it's all about just years and years of playing live. It's totally two different things of playing in your garage, in your basement, in your bedroom, 
when you're on stage and you're sweating and you got you can't see or this or that it's a whole different concept and once you have that experience then it's like all right maybe i'll throw this lick in here even though it's not on the record you've you have the confidence enough to go out of the box and i think that's very important for a drummer is it's cool like i love neil peer and, and he plays note for note 20 40 some years right but there's some drummers like carter Bofer, which is another great oh, drummer yeah and he changes it up yeah. all the time yeah. so it kind of takes you very musically you might mess up there's a chance you might mess up but i guarantee you the second time you'll practice it and you won't mess up so it's good to take some chances here and there get your feet wet and just do it you know so that's basically it awesome um speaking of uh of the heat uh you yeah. kind of had to deal with a lot of heat today. I know there's a lot of drummers who watch these videos yeah. that probably live in, in hot climates. Uh, are you used to playing in the heat, or are you where, where are you from? Uh, I'm like, from Pennsylvania, Wilkes-Barre. I mean, I, I usually, uh, when I, about eight years I've been living in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I used to live in Cleveland, Ohio, most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I moved basically um, for my fiance and my band, so I've been there for about eight years. But I mean, it gets hot there too. But when you're playing outside, there's no like, hold on, guys, time out. Let me let me get some water. <laughs> All right, let's play it again. You're putting on a show, and you you really got to push yourself. You know, I I pray every night, and I pray God give give me you know the uh, help me not get fatigued mm -hmm. or nauseous or you know anything I can possibly pray for that He can bless me with. But sometimes you know you get that feeling where you're just like lethargic and you're just like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna die I'm gonna die but you again I just think about other people that had it way worse than what I have and I go okay this ain't that bad okay <laughs> Slipknot wears masks and you know suits there's no way I could do that and there's no way I, I could be in Rocky training for nine years and still not wear a jumpsuit you know overalls whatever they wear now you know, it's just, it's really mind-boggling to watch them play as good as they are with costumes. Yeah. And then I'm like, I'm crying, like, it's 130 degrees, and these guys got masks on, and they're playing a lot faster than we are. So it's like, sometimes you got to not psych yourself out, like, oh, dude, it's hot, we're going to die. Sometimes you just got to go, you know what? It is what it is. These people in the crowd are, are as hot as we are. Yeah. Let's give it our all. And that's kind of what motivates me. All right. Let's uh, go a little different direction. Yeah. I noticed you have your ride symbol abnormally high compared to most. <laughs> is that for sound purposes or your comfort zone? Because I know like closer to the overhead, you, you had a, the, the ride was coming through the mix a lot better than your other symbols. And it, to me, out front, that sounded nice. It may have still been a little bit of mixing, but yeah. is it self-mixing or is that just comfort? Um, I'm scared that you're very observant. Uh, yeah, we call it the moon. They, people joke about me because I'm probably the only guy in really hard rock that's playing a ride, like Danny Carey does. Um, over the years, I, I think, you know, I've explored a ride position so many different ways. Down here by the toms, down here, like, you know, uh, Travis or any of those guys, and over here and up here. And to me, what just really, really worked for me was playing it up here because I grew up on bebop and so Tony Williams is like one of my idols and I would watch him and his ride was up higher and you know watching the I guess you would say the, the physics of the way our hands move and everything like that is I would almost think of it like casting out fishing instead of coming down here you're using all your shoulder and I, again this is opinion people were like he's an idiot you know, I'll turn this off but for me, it made sense. Yeah. So when I would ride down here, I felt more pressure on my shoulder. When I played it right here, I was using my wrist and my fingers, and that's all I needed to use. I didn't have to use, if I wanted to throw some of my shoulder into it, I could get some of the meat of the symbol. Yeah. But other than that, I would literally just use my fingers and, and my, um, my wrist. And then what I would do was I would take a towel, I say this in my DVD that's coming out, was I would put a towel, I believe Tony Williams did this, don't quote me, but he put a towel on his ride. 
and I would spend six hours to eight hours just going like this, one, two, three, four, to make sure that that stick tip was very defined when I played that ride cymbal. So that is a, a very important thing for people that really want to learn how to play a ride cymbal. There's, there's a technical aspect of playing a ride than just throw your hand on it. You want that articulation, that tip, to really drive through that ride. And from what I've gathered is having a ride here, I just had to do this. Now it looks so much bigger yeah. and higher, but really it's, I mean, what, can my toms are like right here and my ride's here. And I'm just right there. But then over the years, your shoulder might go and it might go lower <laughs> and lower and lower. But um, yeah, so it's just, you know, over the years of me just playing a ride that high, I, I just got used to it. And, I mean, I suggest you just try it maybe mm -hmm. and you would see a total difference in your playing. You're more finesse, not just worried about going into the symbol, but actually playing with the symbol. And uh, which was nice is having a ride this high, and I could put a crash right here. Instead of a ride and a crash here, I can do this. And so you can do a lot of different things. But again, it's opinion. So. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's good advice. I'm, I'm probably going to try that out. Every, everyone has. They're, they'll be like, that's so stupid. Or yeah. they'll be like, dude, this has actually helped my play. Wow. So, I mean, because people really don't realize there's more than just wrist or fingers or the entire arm. There's got to be a machine to run smoothly, right? So you can have this all falling in play, but if this and this doesn't work together, you're basically killing the machine. So what I try to do is I do finger exercises that I show and, you know, really controlling it with my fingers. That's your finesse. The power is going to be more with your wrist. But then you find different things like the molar technique, the push and pull technique, and all these different techniques with just playing a ride cymbal. People don't think you could spend six hours playing a ride cymbal, but obviously when you hear me play, it really does penetrate. No matter even if we had an overhead, I really hit a ride, but I don't hit hard. I, like I always tell people, I hit right. There's two different ways. You can beat the crap out of things and still have control. That's just not my thing. I can't hit hard. My drum tech, Ken from Candir, hits hard, but he has control because yeah. he's practiced that over the years. So there's things that you can do that you haven't been able to, let's say you want to hit a snare really hard, you can't do that if you don't practice that thing. Yeah. Like he has a completely different technique. And there's things where I'm like, oh, that, does, that looks like it's going to kill me, but if it works for him, then God bless him for it. If the ride works good for you here, then so be it. There's like again, there's no wrong and right way to play drums yeah. or set things up. It's just what makes sense to you. I can't tell you to talk this way and have some slang or this or that when you're not used to that. Yeah. So you kind of have to know your own language before you speak other languages. Well, cool. Um, all right. So I'm really interested in the symbols you're playing. It's not really good up on stage. What kind of stuff are you? using on this tour. Which symbols I'm using on this tour? Um, all Zildjian. <laughs> and uh, actually, I'm a big fan of Gavin Harrison from okay. Porcupine Tree. I love his amazing, amazing drum. Yeah. Amazing. And um, it's not like this is the first time these have been ever been brought out, but the cup chimes. Okay. And uh, Gavin used to, I believe, make them out of his crack symbols, and he would make these little cups. And each one had a different pitch. Well, I'm a big fan of splashes. Uh, black clay, we really can't get away with some really cool like splashes, more like you know, digging down into it. But uh, you know, there is some finesse and some black labels. So I got an A custom six inch right above my toms, and then I have two cup chimes that Zildjian made me that I like because they're two notes. So I love that. Um, then I have a on my left. We'll start is a. 8 inch A custom and then a 6 inch bell cup chime and then I have a 18 inch is it 18 again? What's that? On my left side crash. 18, 18 20, 20. Yeah, 18, 20, 19, then a 21 China which is an ultra hammer which you should definitely check out the Z3 one and then a 20 uh, a custom, but they're resos. Yeah, amazing. I love them. They're they're my favorite. And then I have a K custom rock. Okay. Uh, all brilliant. 
Yeah. Uh, and then pocket hats. I don't know oh, if you've ever seen those. Check them out. They're yeah. like a 13 inch? Yeah. Okay. My favorite, favorite, favorite high hats. And so, you know, I, I don't need too much with Black Label. I need enough sounds that I'm trying to hear. Yeah. Um, but they're just different voices, you know, and that's basically what I'm using. Not too crazy, not too elaborate, but enough to get the job done. Cool. All right, so that is Chad here. Uh, if you have enjoyed some of the excellent advice that he's been giving, uh, he actually has a drumming DVD coming out soon. Uh, I didn't want to ask him all the questions because he probably covers everything you can possibly think of in this DVD. He said it's a lot about learning, a lot about making you a better player. Yeah, there's and, an underwater scene that I do. Um, I got it from Bruce Lee and Michael Jordan. They used to basically practice underwater like Bruce Lee would do that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I used to play on pillows and stuff. I didn't want rebound. I wanted to create that for myself. So I went underwater one time and I just started going like this underwater with my hands. And then it started becoming with my fingers closed. And then it started with my almost doing a molar yeah. when I was seven years old, 12 years old. And uh, so there's a really cool scene on the DVD where I'm practicing underwater and showing people how to really control it. And then when you take it out, your hands are so fast, you have to teach your brain to slow down. So try that. <laughs> that sounds You're pretty, pretty fast as it is, but try that. All right, so um, yeah, definitely check out his DVD. I'll put up, um, is it going to be out soon enough for me to put something in I think it will be or? out before the end of this year. Okay. I know that. Do you know, know a name one. for it? or, or I'm something? calling it ADD, All Day Drum. Okay, cool. Very, very so. cool name. All right, so check out the DVD. Do yes, you have you. Uh, YouTube, website, stuff like that? Yeah, that uh, it's, I, I believe it's just B-A-G-G-S-I-V. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, my email chat Saliga at Gmail S Z E L I G A, and my Facebooks, um, and then uh, actually my really good uh, friend now Ken Shock from who used to be in Candir and, and played for Fuel. He's been teching for me. I don't know why, but uh, amazing drummer. So you got to check out his website. I think it's under uh, construction right now, so it's kind of getting fixed and stuff. But you got to check him out. Amazing. Um, it's just, I believe, K E N S C H A L K dot com. All right. Right? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to. Give me a plug. He's like, oh, yeah. I'm going to book gigs for September over here. <laughs> Guy's working. <laughs> See? All right. Well, yeah. Well, I'm going to put, uh, I'll put all the links at the end, and you can uh, kind of look at them. Also, put them all down in the description for you to check out. And, uh, and remember, I like this guy, so don't say anything bad or I'll come after you with Zach. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you so much for Thank you, down brother. With me. It's been uh, a blessing, man. Thanks for coming out to the show and watching us rock out. Dude, that's what this guy did. He rocked out. So check I'll out. I'll pay him on PayPal. Later. <laughs> no payments necessary. But yeah, thank you so much. And uh, uh, thank you. Check out Black Label Society. Check out some live videos of him playing with them, and uh, check out Breaking Benjamin. He played on a lot of all that stuff. So, yeah, this is Chad, and uh, excellent drummer. Thank you for coming out. Today. Thanks, brother. Thank you. God bless.